let's look at index 102 now this standard talks about share based payments guys a share based payment is basically where it is a non monetary consideration i have received goods from a supplier that supplier is basically issued some shares i have received a debt from a party and i have issued shares towards that so these are the payments which are based on shares instead of paying them consideration in the form of cash guys though predominantly this topic of share based payments might talk about everything the more concentration part should be among esops those share based payments which i make to employees is the major concept of consideration here majority of your questions are also tested only based on your share based payments to employees now what is your share based payment to employee and why does it even become such an important concept on today's day you observe that a lot of people change their companies very often there's a 30% hike i jump from this company to other so every company faces a very significant challenge regarding their human resource policy regarding how to contain their employees or how to reduce their employee turnover what is employee turnover that number of times at which i have to replace a particular employee or the time period for which a particular employee is leaving the organization is basically my employee turnover so to reduce my employee turnover what are the significant approaches that an enterprise has to adopt is basically a, a big challenge on today's date this challenge can be overcome with the help of esops esops on today's date are quite widely prevalent but understand i deal with a lot of startups and most of the startups have this problem that the employee will definitely get a better pay packet outside in a multinational company than in a startup then how can a startup actually retain an employee to retain an employee the startup generally starts allocating certain options to the employees to exercise the shares of this company so probably let's say at the time when flipkart started and i have actually exercised shares in that particular company at the beginning by the time actually the exit came up i might have been left out with at least 5 to 6 crores for the options which i hold so what is happening because of this i am getting a lump sum cash flow or i am getting a consideration other than a salary in the form of a lump sum cash flow received at the time of investments that is particularly a reason why your esops have become very very prevalent on today's day now when i talk about esops these esops are broadly broken down into two parts i'm talking about the concept of share based payments to employees I will broadly break down this share based payments to employees into two aspects. The first aspect is called as an equity settled plan. It is called as an equity settled plan. The second aspect is called as cash settled plan. What is the significant difference because between these two plans? Equity settled plan means I will deliver to the employees certain number of equity shares. Under the share based payment option, I am delivering or I am issuing certain number of shares to my employees. The other one is called as cash settled plan what is a cash settled plan cash settled plan occurs whenever you come across a situation where i am not allotting shares to the employee but i am giving them a, a worth of shares in cash let's say for example i have given an employee to exercise the shares of my company at a price of 80 on a future date let's say on 31st of march 2022 on 31st March 2022, let's say the market price of my company is 92. So what I'll say, you, are, you have a right to buy the share at 80. Today's current market price is 92. 
Therefore, instead of you paying me ATI allotting you share, I will directly pay you 12 rupees as settlement. These are called as cash settled plan. Any equity settled plans are generally called as ESOPs. Employees Stock Option Plan While your cash settled plans are called as SAR Stock Appreciation Rights Stock Appreciation Rights So I am saying either there could be an equity settled plan or a cash settled plan whenever I am talking about share based options. One more concept does arise where there is a combination of both equity settled plan. with cash alternative i'll talk about this later but this is also a possibility okay but broadly leave this concept right now i'm not going to concentrate on this topic i'll only concentrate on these two topics of equity settled plans and cash settled plans they are either called as esops or they are called as sar stock appreciation rights now, in either situation, there is a particular accounting treatment that I have to adopt. Let's see. Let's say, for example, on 1st April 2021, I have announced a particular plan and my plan went like this. The plan was, thousand options to hundred employees thousand options to hundred employees that means I have a total of one lakh options at a price of Rupee 50 per option. Okay. This 1 lakh is basically called as options granted. This 50 rupees here per option which is supposed to be paid to exercise that option is called as exercise price. The price at which the employee can subscribe to that option is called as exercise price. Now, I say, let's say I said that these options can be exercised. Today, a person joined the organization. He is entitled to those thousand options. He subscribed by paying 50,000. He exited the organization in the immediate next day. Purpose not served. That is the reason why whenever these options are granted, they always come with an attached condition. They always come with attached condition. Let's say the condition which is attached here is continuous employment for three years. This is called as service condition, a condition which is based on the service of the employee. This way, continuous employment is called as a vesting condition. It is called as vesting condition. How long this vesting condition should be satisfied for a period of three years? This is called as vesting period. So what is a vesting condition? Vesting condition is a condition which has to be satisfied 
for an employee to be entitled to receive the options let's say for example so three years starting from 1st april 2021 so 1st april 2024 is basically called as my date of vesting it's generally a tendency for the m for the employer or the company to allow a certain time period before which they have to exercise these options. So though they are vesting on 1st April 2024, the enterprise will come up with a logic saying that you can exercise these options up to 31st of March 2025. One year time period I have given, this one year time period is generally called as exercise period. Remember, an employee will exercise his option to subscribe for the shares of the company only if the market price of the company is less than the, uh, sorry, is greater than the exercise price. I am saying an option will be exercised only if the exercise price is less than market price so therefore obviously the exercise price is generally less than the market price now if i would have issued in open market i could have issued the share at 100 but now, since I am giving it as a share based payments to my employees, I am issuing it only 50 rupees. So, I am receiving 50 rupees less for each share. This difference is basically considered to be a loss to the company. Loss to company, which is purely notional. Notional loss. is nothing but market price per share MPS on date of exercise of options minus exercise price per option The difference between the market price and the exercise price is loss per option multiplied by number of options exercised. For each option exercised, the loss to the company is the market price on date of exercise minus exercise price. Now, it is a loss. When do I know that the company has made a loss? I know that the company made a, is going to make a loss on the grand date itself. On 1st April 2021, which is my grand date, that date itself when I granted the option, I know that the company will definitely make a loss in future. Conservatism concept, when you know that there is a future loss, you will have to provide it for. So therefore, as on 1st April 2021, when I'm trying to estimate the loss, I cannot estimate the loss. I'll say why you don't you can't ex estimate the loss because this market price market price is on the date of exercise of option. Do I know when is the option exercised? The option is exercised somewhere between 1st April 24 to 31st March 25. Here there will be exercise of option. You standing on 1st April 21 know that there is a loss. You are trying to estimate the loss which it would occur after 3 years. How do I estimate? Do you know? If I really know like that, then I will basically start doing stock trading only. Right? So when I don't know, that is where I have to bring up this concept. 
since this market price minus excise price cannot be identified i will estimate it based on something called as fair value of option what is your fair value of option it is the estimated market price on date of exercise minus exercise price per option so i am estimating using fair value of option this fair value of option should be determined using option pricing models your option pricing models bob blacks and scholes binomial model all that you will read as a part of financial report uh, your strategic financial management the same thing has to be applied in determining what is a fair value of option regarding this concept of number of options exercised i don't know unless and until the options are actually exercised therefore this i will try to estimate based on number of options which are expected to vest how many employees are expected to satisfy the vesting condition how many options are expected to vest based on which i will start calculating what is my loss to company so my loss to company can be given as number of options expected to vest multiplied by fair value of option if in case if in case i'm saying if fair value cannot be determined normally for us it will be given in the question only if it is not given or if it cannot be determined use intrinsic value of option what is intrinsic value of option intrinsic value of option is without taking any estimate without taking any estimate i am trying to identify the loss how do i identify here the intrinsic value of option is equal to market price per share on grand date this is today's spot rate minus exercise price per share or exercise price per option i will use this intrinsic value only if i do not know what is fair value my first priority is always towards fair value of an option and the loss to company is equal to fair value of an option multiplied by number of options expected to vest when should i estimate this this estimation of loss to company should occur on the grand date on the day on which the options are granted this is estimated future loss when will the loss occur the loss will occur any time between 2024 to 2025 so what am i saying this loss is expected to occur after 3 years so by conservatism concept i'll have to recognize this loss today only so what i'll do this amount of loss to company loss to company which is computed as above either using fair value per option or using intrinsic value of option should be charged to pnl should be charged to pnl absolutely because it is a esti future estimated loss so i am directly charging it to pnl applying the concept of conservatism but when is this loss expected to occur this loss is expected to occur in 2024 25 three years later so what is the point of debiting the pnl at one shot so he says this loss to pnl should be charged over the estimated vesting period the period for which vesting condition is expected to be satisfied 
on a straight line basis. In this question, when I said that the loss will occur after three years, that three years is the vesting period. So whatever loss you estimate, you will have to make sure that you're allocating the loss to each of those three years on a straight line basis. Clear? Got the concept? Now, let's say for example, Number of employees on grand date, guys, 1st April 21. I already told you number of employees are 1000. Options per employee. Are 100. Exercise price of each option, each option exercise price is 50, let's say my fair value of option determined as per option pricing model was 70 or let's take 30 vesting condition is continuous employment and vesting period is three years Estimated employees leaving the organization Estimated employees to leave within three years In year one I estimate that there will be about 40 employees who will leave in year two, I am estimating that at least 60 will leave. But finally, when it came to year three, the actual number of employees who left the organization without completing the three years of continuous employment was actually 75. Now, I am expected to solve this question. How do you solve? Look at the formula or look at the way in which I solve. Three years, write down first each balance sheet date. What are your balance sheet dates? 31st of March 2022, 31st of March 23, 31st of March 24. First, start with number of employees expected to satisfy vesting condition. Number of employees expected to satisfy vesting. How many employees were there actually? Thousand. But out of thousand, I am saying first year 40 could leave. That means how many employees could complete vesting? 960. Second year, I am estimating 60 people will leave within three years. So it became 940. Third year, 75 people left, 925. This is the number of employees left. Or number of employees who are expected to satisfy vesting condition. This is my part A. Part B. What is the number of options per employee? If I multiply the number of employees with options per employee, I will get number of options expected to vest. Number of options which are expected to vest. 
options per employee i have already given you at the beginning 100 options per employee 96000 options expected to vest 94000 92500 these are the number of options which i am expecting to vest to identify the total loss to the company i'll have to multiply it with fair value of option what is your fair value of option i've already given you fair value of option is 30 rupees multiply and you should be able to get what is the loss to the company what is the total cost to the company calculate multiply this is 28 lakh 80000 this is 28 lakh 20,000 and this is 27 lakh 75,000 check is that correct last one I'm doubtful 92,500 into 30 yep 27 lakh 75,000 these are the total losses expected by to the company total expected loss or total expected cost i'll call this as staff cost because i'm giving it to employees and considering it as staff cost here to give a separate name for the staff cost i can use two languages employee compensation expense or employee benefit expense Ultimately, it's an expense. It is staff cost. As simple as that. This loss has to be allocated over the entire vesting period on a straight line basis. So, what is vesting period? Vesting period is three years. Correct. this vesting period has to be this entire loss should be allocated over the vesting period so cumulative cost or staff cost to be more specific to be recognized First year, one third of the staff cost should be recognized. So 28,800, 28,80,000 into 1 by 3. By the time I come to the second year, it should be 28,20,000, but two years is completed. So two thirds of the provision should be created. Last year, 27,75,000, entire thing is completed. So entire 3 by 3. This is the cumulative cost to be recognized in the PNL. First case, can you tell me the answer? In the first case, we multiply by 30. This is 9,60,000. This is 18,80,000. Last one complete amount of 27 lakh 75000 this should be the amount of provision or amount of cost which should have been recognized in the pnl on a cumulative basis therefore less amount already recognized in previous years First year, I did not recognize anything in the last year. Therefore, I'll have to identify 
amount charged to PNL in current year. Amount which is charged to PNL in current year. Calculate first year. I need a total amount of 9,60,000. Last year I did not provide anything. Current year you provide entire 9,60,000. By the time I come to second year, last year I already provided 9,60,000. I should totally provide 18,80,000. Therefore, in the second year I will only provide 9,20,000. Third year I have to provide 27,75,000 on a cumulative basis. Last two years already 18,80,000 has already been created as a provision. So therefore, 8,95,000 of provision is supposed to be created in this way, I will identify the amounts to be recognized in PNL each year. So when I am charging it to PNL each year, I will have to recognize an entry. So I will have to debit the staff cost. Instead of writing it as staff cost, the standard prescribes the language to be used as employee benefit expense. Use whatever they ultimately you will charge it off to PNL only now. So, what difference does it make? Employee benefit expense account debit. Now, this is only a provision should be kept to be kept. I'm recognizing this entry in year one, that is for the year 21-22. I'm only creating this provision because the actual loss will occur after three years. So, until the actual loss occurs, I'm just parking this loss. So I'll park this loss into an account which is by name known as share based payment. Equity year one in the year of 2021, sorry, 21 22. I'll recognize this amount for 9 lakh 60. I have credited share based payments equity, which should be shown under presented under other equity. Why should it be presented under other equity? Because this is purely of nature of a purely a nature of equity share capital. So it is shareholder funds. Therefore, I'm looking at to be presented under other equity. But let's say the employees are not having an option to exercise these shares, but they have a right to receive cash settlement. That means these are not options, but they are rights, stock appreciation rights. In such case, I have a company as an obligation to pay cash. Therefore, it should not be equity. It should be liability. In such case, I'll write it as share based payment liability account. Why do you write it as liability? Because I'm saying that sometimes there could be share based payments which are equity settled or sometimes cash settled. If it is ESOP equity settled, then I will transfer it to share based payment equity. If it is a SEA cash settled, then I cannot transfer it to equity, but I have to transfer it to liability. So it should either be presented under current liability or non current liability. Clear till now? Any doubt till now, please let me know. Any doubt so far, please let me know.
Now, until now, whatever we discussed is a simple concept of how do we record. But there are two things that we have to get into now. One, what happens when they exercise the option? Second one, what happens when they lapse the option? First, I'll talk about this lapse of option. Lapse of option can occur in two instances. One, where the employee is not meeting the vesting condition itself. That means he is not sticking in the company for three years, then obviously they lapse. Or number two, he was there in the organization for three years, but he did not want to take up ESOPs. He did not want to pay that 50 rupees per share. So there also they can lapse the option. So two ways there is a lapse which can happen. One, an un un sorry, uh, unvested option can lapse when the vesting condition is not satisfied. Vested option can lapse if they are not exercised. Both the situations are very much possible. Let's see what we do when there is a situation which emerges like that. First, let me talk about exercise. Let's say that every every option here has been exercised. Let's see what is the entry that you pass in year four. That is in 2024-25. This is the year. Let me record entry. First, I'll have to collect 50 rupees from each person. Bank account debit. How much will I collect? 50 rupees into number of employees who are actually satisfying the vesting condition assuming that there is no lapse 925 employees have satisfied the vesting condition so 925 employees each employee is entitled to receive 100 rupees calculate 925 into 50 925 into 50 into 100 is 4 lakh 60 sorry in 46 lakh 25000 is the amount 46 lakh 25000 is the amount which the company will collect they have an obligation to allocate shares but don't forget there is a loss which you have already recognized you have to reverse the loss so sbp i'm writing in short share based payments share based payment equity account debit How much provision did I create that I have to reverse? I've created a total provision of 27,75,000 over three years. First year 960, second year 920, third year 895. The total is 27,75,000. So that 27,75,000 of provision which I created for these share based payments, I have to debit it. I have to nullify because they're exercising. Once they exercise, they are entitled to receive equity share capital. How many shares? 50 shares. I'm oh, sorry, not 50 shares. 925 shares or 925 employees. Each one entitled to receive 100 options. Let's say face value of each share is 10. Therefore, they will get 9 lakh or 92 lakh 50,000. Oh no, 9 lakh 25,000. The balance will be considered as my securities premium. The balance to the credit should be considered as my securities premium. Balancing figure, pick it up. How much? Sixty four lakh seventy five thousand. This is the entry which I will recognize whenever the options are exercised. But this is only possible when these are considered to be ESOPs, that is equity settled. If I assume that these are not ESOPs but instead they are SAR, then what I'll do? Net cash settlement should happen. So I'll debit share base payment liability account. I've created a liability here. It was not equity. And I will credit it to bank because I'm paying them in bank. 
in net cash settlement amount the total amount of provision which i created that is 27,75,000 will be paid off to my employees yeah now let's come to this concept of lapse of options I told you that there are two lapses which can occur. One, an unexercised option can lapse. An unexercised option can lapse whenever I can come back, uh, whenever they do not satisfy the vesting condition. An unvested option can lapse when they don't satisfy vesting condition. Unvested options. If vesting condition is not satisfied, same way, there can be a lapse of a vested option. If the vesting condition is not satisfied, but if they are not exercised, within the vesting period, I have given you one year to exercise it. Within the exercise period, if they are not exercising these options, uh, automatically at the end of the exercise period, that is 31st March 2025, these vested options shall lapse. If there is a first type of lapse, that is where the unvested options lapsed the, when the vesting condition is not satisfied. Here, there is no separate accounting. Then what do you do? In this case, without doing a separate accounting, I will adjust it against the provision to be created for subsequent years. Adjusted against provision to be created in subsequent years look at this problem which we have solved just now there was a lapse right the number of employees which was considered as 960 has reduced to 940 20 reduced to 925 reduced by 15 again so if you look at the provision to be created initially i created 960 but subsequently what happened automatically i created only 920 if you look at actually the total amount to be created is 18 lakh 80 thousand over two years Guys, 18 lakh 80 thousand if i create over two years each year i should have created a provision of 9 lakh 40 thousand but first year i created a provision of 9 lakh 60 extra 20 thousand provision i created so that's why when it came to the second year instead of creating 940 the excess provision of 20 was reduced and the amount of provision is only 920 if i have to create 27 lakh 75 thousand over three years period then that means I'll have to create only a provision of 9,25,000. Correct? I'll only have to create a provision of 9,25,000. But look at what happened. While creating this 9,25,000 of provision, I created a, an excess provision of 9,60, which is 35,000 in excess. Second year, I only created 9,20, 5,000 deficit. So therefore, 30,000 excess provision is still existing. That's why instead of 925, I created only 895. So whenever there is a lapse, instead of writing a separate accounting entry, I'm just adjusting it against the subsequent year amount of provision. That cannot be possible in this case. When the vested options are not exercised within the exercise period, in such cases, Accounting entry to be recognized is 
I've already created a provision in form of share based payments equity. I don't need now. So share based payment equity account debit. I don't need that amount anymore. Earlier when I created this provision, I created it through PNL. So either I'll give it back to PNL or you can give it back to General Reserve. Now someone can come up and say, sir, what if stock appreciation rights are not exercised? Okay, stock appreciation rights will anyways be exercised because it is a right to receive cash. Who will say no to cash? So share based payment liability, which is created for a stock appreciation, right? There cannot be a lapse. There cannot be a lapse. They will definitely accept that cash. Therefore, there cannot be a lapse, no accounting entry. But when it is employee stock option plan, there can be a lapse. In such case of a lapse, I'll recognize a separate accounting entry where I debit the share based payment liability and I credit it to either the general reserve or the PNL. That is your wish. Clear? This will bring us to the end of the concept regarding accounting for an, a share based payment. There are also topics that we have to look at. One is regarding modifications and cancellations. And one more which we have to look at is the relationship between a parent and the subsidiary. Clear?